you say your name to tell others who you are. My name is Larry. That was a problem from the start. I couldn't pronounce L or R. Tough when your name is L A R R Y. I needed speech therapy during kindergarten so I could say my name. My legal name is Larry, not Lawrence. Yet in elementary school, teachers called me Lawrence, no matter what my birth certificate says. A bank teller made me endorse my paycheck for delivering newspapers a second time because she insisted I must be Lawrence. In high school, teachers called me Larry in class, but my records, my report cards, my diploma say Lawrence. I gave up asking to be me. I became a teacher. When I started teaching, a gay man would be fired if the school district could prove he was gay. To keep my job in the bars, at first I would say, my name is Michael. At least until I sensed I wanted to see you again, then I'd tell the truth and be Larry. The men I met in the bars, they understood. They also used fake names to keep a job or so family wouldn't find out. I belong to the Chicago Prime Timers, a club with 212 gay senior men. We have 15 social events a month a monthly buffet dinner at Ann Sather's restaurant, bowling, and small groups which meet in members' apartments to play cards, double train dominoes, or to talk about a book. We have a membership directory so members can stay in touch with each other despite ever-changing email addresses or changing cell phone numbers, or when a member moves to a new apartment. We email an updated directory to members every six months. We board members. We know that perhaps 30% of the club's members choose to not be listed in the directory. Some have no listing in the directory at all. Some are listed only by their initials. Some list the fake name they used in the bars when they were younger. Some of our members were previously married and have children, where once they feared being denied visitation to their children if the ex-wife could prove that they were gay. Today, as senior citizens, they fear that if their adult children do a computer search for dad's name and see him listed in a gay club's directory or in the newsletter as hosting a poker game in his apartment, the relationship will change. They fear not seeing their grandchildren. It doesn't matter that the directory is delivered only to members and members must have an access code. It doesn't matter that the newsletter's public version uses first names only. Fear is not reasonable. In a club as big as ours, you may sit next to a man at a potluck for the first time, even though you've both belonged to the club for years. As you chat, you learn you have common interests. You know Jacob on his name tag. You don't trade phone numbers because tomorrow you'll look for Jacob in the directory. You'll ask to meet for dinner or to see a movie. You'll phone because you need some new friends. You feel isolated. Your best friend died or has moved away or due to health issues. He doesn't go out much anymore. You can't find Jacob in the directory. The chance to connect, to move past feeling isolated, to widen your support network, that chance is lost. Club member Charles White loved people. He worked as a bartender on Amtrak trains. He liked it when customers sat at the bar to talk to him. The view out the window of the train was pretty, but it was the same pretty view on the same route every day. Talking to people was better. 
Charles also worked part-time as travel agent. His retirement plan was to organize group tours along the rivers of Europe for his friends. One week, one week after Charles retired from Amtrak, he suffered a major stroke and entered a hospital in Northwest Indiana. I wanted to visit. Given that this spent driving more than an hour into Indiana, and since I was not sure whether the intensive care unit allowed visitors, I phoned first. The hospital receptionist told me, we don't have a patient named Charles White. It was four days before the only member of the club who knew his real name heard that I was looking to visit Charles. Charles White was a fake name he had used in the club for 20 years. I visited Charles the next day. He was now in a coma. His sister was in the room. She was pleased that her brother's friend was reaching out. I finessed my answer when she asked me, how do you know my brother? I didn't know if Charles was out to his family. Charles White died a day later. He died not knowing that a member of the club came to see him. I wonder how many LGBTQs don't join a senior center or don't apply for support services because they have two names and they don't feel comfortable explaining why. They might fear meeting someone who knows them by the other name. They might fear having to explain the truth either to the friend or to the staff. Keeping the secret is their number one priority. Names have power. They say who you are. Trading names brings others closer. When your real name is hidden, names keep others at a distance, leaving you isolated. Keeping your secret carries a heavy price. So, who are you? Let's trade names. <laughs>